morning and welcome to Faith and Healing School. Uh, the glorious day in the Lord. We're here by the grace of God. Thank you, Father, for all your blessings on us. Thank you for another opportunity to share your love with the people. Lord, I ask that you guide my words here today. Holy Spirit, have your way. Lord, I ask that all the people who watch this and who are here today came with expectant hearts to receive from you, to receive your word, to receive wisdom and guidance and to receive your love. Father, use me. Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak the words that you want spoken. Bless these hands, bless this mind, bless this body, Lord. Let it be used for you. I yield myself to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God has made a way. He always makes a way. It's never based on God's ability. It's always based on our faith. They say that God has already done everything he's going to do. He's already made the way. Jesus has already paid the price for everything. He's already took every sickness, sin, and disease upon himself. He's already took all the poverty and lack and every pain upon himself. He's already took all the loneliness and depression and anxiety upon himself. It's already been done. When we believe that, when we receive that revelation, we can get rid of it in our lives. He bore our sins. What he bore, we not need to bear. We just need to come to God and ask for forgiveness, and he forgives us. And to get in on all the other things, all the other blessings, for Jesus bearing all our pain and sickness to become a reality in our lives, we have to confess him as our Lord and our Savior. God, I come to you right now and I ask you to forgive me of my sins, of anything that I did that was not according to your will and your commands. And I thank you, Father, that you are faithful and just to forgive me every time. We're only human. We stumble. We fall. We make mistakes. And you forgive us of every single one of them. Just at our asking. And Father, I believe that Jesus is your son. That he came down to earth and lived as a man. That he willingly went to crucifixion. Took that beating for me. That he died. And he went to hell and paid the price for my sins. And on the third day, you reached down and pulled them up, raised them back to life, and sat them on the heavenly throne next to you. Thank you, Father. And I reaffirm him as my Lord and my Savior, the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father. And now I can confidently pray the prayers that are written in God's word because they belong to me as a child of God. If you just said those prayers with us, if you heard me say them and you're saying them now, you've got a whole new future ahead of you. The future is bright. The promises are yours. God loves you. Healing belongs to you. There's so many things that God wants to teach you. So much wisdom he wants to give you. So much knowledge he has prepared for you. He says to ask and I'll give you wisdom. Without reproach. Ephesians chapter 1. Verses 17 through 23. I pray to you, the glorious Father, the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, that you would give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation as I come to know you better, 
Then I will have deeper insight. I will know the confidence that you want me to have and the glorious wealth that your people will inherit. I will also know the unlimited greatness of your power as it works with might and strength. For me, a believer, you work with that same power in Christ when you brought him back to life and you gave him that honor position, the one next to you on the heavenly throne. Jesus is far above all rulers, authorities, powers, lords, and all the names that can be named, not only in this present world, but also in the world to come. You have put everything under the control of him. You have made him the head for everything, for the good of the church. The church is his body and completes him as he fills everything in every way. Hallelujah. God is so awesome. It gives us the opportunity gives us his written word, gives us the Holy Spirit for wisdom and guidance. Ephesians chapter 3. I'm asking you, God, to give me a gift from the wealth of your glory. I'm asking that you give me your inner strength and power through your spirit. See, this is why it's so important to receive him as your Lord and your Savior. Because when you do that, the Holy Spirit is deposited in you. The Holy Spirit comes to live within you. And then you can confidently ask for inner strength and power. Because that Spirit is already in you. And He brings with Him all the power and love of God. That Christ will live in me through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground into which I sink my roots and on which I have my foundation. This way, with all of God's people... I'll be able to understand how wide, long, high, and deep your love is. I will know Christ's love, which goes far beyond any knowledge. I'm praying this so I will be completely filled with you, Father God. Glory belongs to you. Whose power is at work in me? By your power, you can do infinitely more than I could ever ask or imagine. Glory belongs to you in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time and eternity. Amen. It's important. Today's discussion will be based on the, the love of God. We pray that love may be the ground into which we sink our roots and have our foundation. Because love is selfless. Love looks out for other people. Just like Jesus did. That incredible love that he had for us Enabled him to go to the cross and take all that punishment. Take our punishment. Sacrifice for us. Colossians 1, verses 9 through 13. For this reason, I have not stopped praying about this. I ask you, God, to fill me with the knowledge of your will through every kind of spiritual wisdom and insight. I ask this so I will live the kind of life that proves I belong to you, Lord. Then I will want to please you in every way as I grow in producing every kind of good work by this knowledge about you. I ask you to strengthen me with your glorious might, with all the power that I need to patiently endure everything with joy. I also thank you, Father, for you have made me able to share the light, which is what you want me to inherit. You, Father God, have rescued me from the power of darkness. And you brought me into the kingdom of your Son, whom you love. Hallelujah. That's good stuff. That's good. It's powerful. Let it sink in. Pray those prayers with conviction. We want to live the kind of life that proves... We belong to the Lord. What does that? Living like Jesus lived. Selflessly. Putting the needs of others first. Jesus didn't focus on himself when he walked this earth. If he did, he would have stayed in one place with a house where he could have comfort all the time. Not out, walking hundreds of miles, it had to be, constantly. Not for his own benefit, constantly spreading the news, telling people how much God loved them, 
doing miracles, showing them physical signs of God's love. Healing, healing, healing. Teaching. So people can understand and get the healing. Was especially selfless when he sacrificed himself on the cross. God rewards selfless acts. When we're looking out for other people, we're going to be blessed. Just like he promises to bless those that bless us. When somebody is taking our interests at heart and blessing us, God's going to bless them for their selfless act, for acting on our behalf. Of course, we need to make our prayers and needs known to God. But he hears us the first time that we pray. We don't need to be continually praying for ourselves over and over again for the, for the same thing. Pray for what we need. And then intercede for those around you. In your realm of operation. The people in your life that need things. Focus on the needs of others. And God will reward your selflessness. He'll meet your need. Instead of me, me, me. God will see that you have a heart to help others. Jesus is our example. We see that it wasn't easy for him to do what he did. He actually asked if, he, if there's any possible way, God, to do this. Do it the other way. But if there isn't, I'll do it your way. And he did. This morning's devotion was called Change Your Focus. Job 42, 10 and 12. The Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. And the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. Think of all the horrible things that Job went through. Lost everything. Did he sit there praying to have his sheep back? To have his farm restored? No. Prayed for his friends. When Job's focus was on the well-being of others and not on his own problems, then God moved mightily on his behalf. And not only did his friends get blessed and, and have their prayers and have Job's prayers answered for them, but he gave Job twice as much as he had before. John 15, 12 through 13. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Put yourself aside, she's saying. This is Jesus. This is love each other the way I loved you. I put myself aside. I stepped off the throne of heaven, came down here and lived as a man. Think he wanted to do that? Heaven is paradise. It's never too hot. It's never too cold. It's never back-breaking work. He was the son of a carpenter. He worked. He didn't sit all those years that we don't have record of. He wasn't sitting around doing nothing, lounging. 
by the sea of Galilee with his feet up. People worked hard. Jesus did that for us. He didn't have to. He did that out of love. Selfless love. He's our example. He says, love each other the way I loved you. Lay down your life. Put yourself aside. Time aside. Set the things that you want to do aside. You may have opportunities to go out and have fun. And there'll be somebody who needs to hear an encouraging word from God. And you have the word. Sure, you'd rather go have fun. Sit back and relax. Somebody needs to hear that God loves them. You got that word in you. Lay down your life. Put aside the nonsense for a little while. And that's all it is, is nonsense. Anything else that's not getting souls to the kingdom of God, it's trivial. It's trivial. It's not the meat and potatoes of this life. This morning's devotion goes on. Don't sit around wallowing in self-pity, focused on what's wrong with your own life. Pray in faith for what you need and then move on to focusing on others' needs. Luke 6.31 says, As you would like and desire that men would do to you, do exactly so to them. I want people praying for me. I need people praying for me. Lifting me up in prayer. It's not an easy situation that I'm living through. I don't sit around crying, oh me, God, all the time. Pull myself up on my bootstraps every morning and get going. I want others to prosper and be healthy and be happy, so I pray for them. I don't focus on what I need. God knows what I need. I prayed. I don't got to pray for me anymore. He heard me. The angels are at work bringing in the things I need. I took authority over situations. First Peter chapter 3 verses 8 through 11. Finally, all of you should be of one mind, the same mind, united in spirit, sympathizing with one another, loving each other as brethren of one household, compassionate and courteous, tender-hearted and humble. Look into others' needs. Never return evil for evil or insult for insult, scolding, tongue lashing, berating, but on the contrary, blessing and praying for their welfare, their happiness, their protection, and loving them. For know that to this you have been called, that you yourselves may inherit a blessing from God. that you may obtain a blessing as heirs, bringing welfare and happiness and protection. <coughs> so you're praying for the welfare of others so that you can be blessed. The word says doesn't say, sit around praying for yourself all day and I'll bless you. It says right there, Blessing and praying for people's welfare. So that you myself yourselves can inherit a blessing. 
For let him who wants to enjoy life and see good days keep his tongue from evil and his lips from guile, treachery, and deceit. Let him turn away from witness and shun it, and let him do right. Let him search for peace and harmony, undisturbedness from fears, agitating passions and moral conflicts, and eagerly seek the peace. Do not merely desire peaceful relationships with God, with your fellow man, and with yourself, but pursue and go after them. Change your focus. Pray for others' needs to be met. Meet those needs yourself whenever possible. And God will make sure that you have all you need. Sometimes, people are telling you their need, not for you to pray for them, but because you have the ability, God's given you the resources to meet that need yourself. You don't need to sit around praying for something that you have the means to do. You are the answer to their prayer. Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance, so that you may always, under all circumstances, and whatever the need be, be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support, and furnished in every abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Sometimes our resources to pray for other people. Sometimes our resources are wallet to meet the need. God is able. God is a true source and he uses people. He puts people in the right places at the right time. We look and we can see in the word how many times people's needs were met because somebody else went out of their way to get them help. You could see it when those the guy's buddies carried him on the stretcher up on top of a roof, cut a hole in the roof and lowered him down. They went out of their way. They sacrificed their time. And I'm sure that they had to fix that guy's roof too. They did it selfless act for their friend who was paralyzed and stuck on a bed. They wanted him better. Matthew 8, 5 through 13 is another example. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to them, go, and he goes, and another come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from the east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way as you have believed. So let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Pray in faith to the Father for your friends. Your acquaintances, anybody, the people you know need something. Come to the Lord in faith. The story of Jairus in Luke chapter 8. And behold, there came a man named Jairus. He was a ruler of the synagogue. He fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. 
He had an only daughter about 12 years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitude thronged him. And when he came into the house, he permitted no one in except Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the girl. Now all wept and mourned for her. But he said, do not weep. She's not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. But he put them out, all outside, took her by the hand, and called, saying, little girl, arise. Then her spirit returned, and she arose immediately, and he commanded that she be given something to eat. When Jairus started that journey, the girl was only sick. Sure, it wasn't an easy journey. Walking all that way, thinking about your daughter dying at home. He put his feelings aside and he went on. He prayed to the father on behalf of his daughter. Jesus came and healed her. That word arise brings me back to the scripture yesterday that I used. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. This is what we're called to do every day. Arise and shine for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. You got to be the light. Shine the light into people's lives by praying for them. <coughs> Don't sit around and look at the darkness around you. Shine the light. The light dispels the darkness. That, uh, that chapter of Isaiah goes and says, when you shine your light in other people's darkness, your darkness will be dispelled too. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what it says. Fortunately, I don't have to be pretty sure. I can be exactly sure and just go in here and look. You are the light of the world. Don't keep the light to yourself. Though darkness covers all the earth and black clouds shrouds the nations, yet the eternal, the eternal shines out upon you. His splendor on you gleams. When you're shining, the splendor of the Lord is shining out from you. John 15, 13 through 17. No one has greater love no one has shown stronger affection than to lay down, give up his own life for his friends. You are my friends if you keep on doing the things that I command you to do. I do not call you servants or slaves any longer, for a servant does not know his master, does not know what his master is doing or working out. But I have called you my friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. I have revealed to you everything that I have heard and learned from him. You have not chosen me, but I chose you, and I have appointed you, and you appointed you, and I have planted you. God planted you. He's got you in a position where he wants you. He puts people in your lives. He puts you in people's lives. That you might go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit may be lasting, that it may remain and abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, as presenting all that I am, he may give it to you. This is what I command you, that you love one another. Ask in Jesus' name for the things that your friends need, for the people in your life, 
Focus on their needs. Galatians 6, verses 7 through 10. Do not be deceived, deluded, or misled. God will not allow himself to be sneered at, scorned, disdained, or mocked by mere pretensions or professions or by his precepts being set aside. His precepts. The way he does things. He inevitably deludes himself who attempts to delude God. For whatever a man sows, that and only that will he reap. For he who sows to his own flesh Lower nature, sensuality, will from the flesh reap decay and ruin and destruction. What are you reaping? What are you sowing? Sow prayers for other people. Sow prayers for their prosperity. Sow prayers for their healing and you'll reap healing and prosperity in your own life. And let us not lose heart and grow weary, faint, in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the right point that sees it, we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faith. So then, on as occasion, as occasion and opportunity open up to us, let us do good morally to all people, not only being useful and profitable to them, but also doing what is for their spiritual good and advantage. Be mindful to be a blessing, especially to those who are a household of faith, those who belong to God's family with you, the other believers. We're all in this together. Everybody just stuck to themselves in their own miserable world. Everybody be miserable. Nothing would be getting done and things would get darker and darker and darker. Start praying for other people. Start putting it out there. Start sowing healing in other people's lives. Start sowing prosperity and joy and peace. Be mindful to be a blessing. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart. You will find rest and relief and ease and refreshment and recreation and blessed quiet for your souls. For my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, hard, sharp, or pressing, but comfortable, gracious, pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be borne. What's his burden? What he told us to do? What he tell us to do? To love one another. Show your love for other people. By keeping prayer, keeping them in prayer, lift it up. The easy read version of that says, Come to me all you who are tired and from the heavy burden that you have been forced to carry. And I will give you rest. Accept my teaching. Learn from me. I am gentle and humble in spirit. And you will be able to cut, get some rest. Yes, the teaching that I ask you to accept is easy. The load I give you to carry is light. First Timothy 2, verses 1 through 4. First of all, then I admonish you and urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be offered on behalf of all men. That's for us to do. For kings in all over positions of authority or high responsibility, that outwardly we may pass a quiet and undisturbed life, and inwardly a peaceably, a peaceable one, in all godliness and reverence and seriousness in every way. For such praying is good and right, and it is pleasing and acceptable to God, our Savior, who wishes all men to be saved, and increasingly to perceive and recognize and discern how pre know precisely and correctly divine truth. Those are all the things we got to pray for people for. That they know the truth. Ephesians 6.18 Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the Spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. To that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose 
and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. Think he wants us to pray for other people? Sure sounds like it. I mean, it's not a burden that's back-breaking. You're not out shoveling rocks in the heat. You can sit in the cool shade of your home. Pray for people. Pray for the needs of people. God will move mightily in your life. As you put yourself aside, pray for other people. First Samuel 12, 23 says, Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. First Kings 13, 6. And the king said to the man of God, Entreat now the favor of the Lord your God and pray for me that my hand may be restored. And the man of God entreated the Lord and the king's hand was restored and became as it was before. Acts 12, 5. So Peter kept in prison, but fervent prayer for him was persistently made to God by the church. And we know what? The angel went. The doors were open. Pete got out. People were praying for him. James 5.16 Confess to one another therefore your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins. And pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available and dynamic in its working. People take that last part. The earnest prayer of a righteous man has tremendous power. Great, I'm praying for myself. It has tremendous power. No, look at the verse before. The, the sentence before. Pray also for one another. Of course you can pray for yourself. You only got to pray once. God heard you. He wasn't busy doing something else. Wasn't distracted with his phone. Take the time to pray for other people. God's word is so awesome. So many things, so many times he talks about putting others first. Being selfless. Pushing through. So many times we're sitting in the midst of our own problems. It ain't easy pushing through. It's not easy putting our problems aside to pray for other people. To give them a call. That's why we pray in the beginning. The strength. To patiently endure everything with joy. We pray. It will be filled. With God's power. As it works with might and strength. For me a believer. We declare. Glory belongs to you. Whose power is at work in me? There's a lot of things going on in life. Make it difficult. To get up and push through. So much easier to close your eyes and stay in bed. That doesn't help anybody. Except the devil. He likes people. Puts laziness on them. He likes them that way. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands. And what comes? Destruction. 
And that's what the devil likes. He likes to destroy. He likes to beat down. He likes to keep throwing challenges and obstacles in people's way. Trying to get them to avoid telling people about Jesus. God loves you. Right now, the way you are, He loves you. He heard you when you prayed. He asks you. He commands you to love one another and He asks you to pray for other people. Because your prayers have tremendous power. going to close with our my set of scriptures here but seek aim at strive after first of all his kingdom his righteousness his way of doing and being right and then all these things taken together will be given to you besides he who did not withhold or spare even his own son but gave him up for us all will he not also with him freely and graciously give us all other things and God says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect or useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. I will cry out to the God most high who performs on my behalf and rewards me but brings to pass his purposes for me and surely completes them. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. And I am convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who began a good work in me will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in me. If things aren't perfect, then God's not done. Still working. He is alert and active, watching over his word to perform it. He is alert and active, watching over his word to perform it. And he says when we pray for other people, we'll get the things that we pray for. We're sowing prayer into people's lives. Our prayers have tremendous power. And we will reap the benefits of that. Don't focus on your own situation. Put it aside. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your time here today. Thank you for your presence. Here, Father, I ask you to go out and bless everybody in the sound of my voice, everybody watching this at home. Just wrap your loving arms around them. Let them know how much you love them and help them to see the people they need to pray for, to open doors of opportunity, to let your power flow. Thank you, Father. Watch over and protect and bring everybody back here safely. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. What is the title of the uh, Jesus, our example.